Functional connectivity, which is a measure that attempts to summarize how different brain regions may interact with each other, is a vital part of brain imaging. Functional connectivity graphs, or matrices, were created from resting state functional magnetic resonance imaging, or RSFMRI, data. In brain imaging, the MRI technique involves the use of radio waves in a strong magnetic field to generate images of a subject's brain and to record brain activity. During an MRI scan, the subject lies down inside a large tube-shaped magnet. Radio frequency electromagnetic pulses are then introduced, and the machine listens to how the molecules realign themselves, giving us a sense of the sorts of tissue or activity that are present in each region. Functional MRI, or fMRI, uses a principle called blood oxygen level dependency, or BOLD, to measure brain activity. When a brain area is more active, it consumes more oxygen, and to meet this increased demand, blood flow is directed to the active area. Oxygen is transported by hemoglobin in the blood, and the magnetic properties of hemoglobin change depending on whether it is carrying oxygen or not. Bold fMRI detects these changes in magnetic properties, allowing researchers to indirectly measure neural activity by observing changes in blood flow. Functional connectivity data is used in neuroscience research to understand the relationships between different regions of the brain and chart how they experience change over time. By having a measure of this change, researchers can understand how the brain works in response to specific stimuli and tasks, or even during resting state. Resting state refers to any period of time in which the brain of a subject is awake and alert, not actively engaged in a task, but not asleep. You can also think of this state as a sort of mind wandering. The functional connectivity matrices included in this data set were created by a software designed specifically for processing resting state MRI data. This software tool, known as CPAC, or the Configurable Pipeline for the Analysis of Connectomes, was used to process the resting state MRI data from the Healthy Brain Network. FC data were created as part of the Reproducible Brain Charts Project, which is an initiative that aims to aggregate several of the largest studies on brain development in youth as publicly available data resources for the scientific community. You can think of CPAC as a tool that is used to distill the signal within raw data collected by an fMRI scan. The data undergo a variety of transformations and realignments, ensuring that the signals can be compared across individuals. Subsequently, you can think of functional connectivity as the measure of how different parts of the brain interact with each other, as it is the correlation between activity in each pair of regions. Functional connectivity data is often understood in the form of a matrix or graph, where each cell of the matrix captures each pair of correlations. Now we can get more into the technical details of CPAC and how functional connectivity data was computed. CPAC builds upon a robust set of existing neuroimaging software packages and makes it easy for both novice users and experts to clean and explore their data using a wide array of processing tools. Users define analysis pipelines by specifying a combination of options and analyses to be run. Results can then be compared across groups and individual subjects. Group results are advantageous in the sense that they typically have large participant numbers and can often be generalized to a specific population. Single subject results, which are not as generalizable, offer unique insights about the intricacies of one person's brain functionality. For example, it could be interesting to see the difference in functional connectivity for one person when they are presented with any given task A as compared to the functional connectivity for the same person when they are presented with any given task B. CPAC relies on both structural and functional neuroimaging data, where structural scans capture high-resolution images of brain anatomy, and functional scans capture ongoing variation in the brain activity. Magnetic resonance images are captured by introducing a magnetic field and perturbing pulses to the tissue, recording the ways in which each voxel or small cube of brain tissue responds. In the case of structural images, often measured by T1-weighted or T1W contrast, white areas indicate connective or white matter tissue, gray areas predominantly contain the nerves of the brain itself, and black areas are largely cerebrospinal fluid. For functional imaging, as mentioned earlier, this depends on the bold signal. 
A typical CPAC analysis pipeline will take in one T1 weighted image and one functional bold image. While structural imaging data can be analyzed on its own to test certain hypotheses, functional imaging data requires the analysis of structural data as well. For example, if a researcher was interested in measuring differences in gray matter volume as a function of age, they could process T1W images and make estimates of this change. Conversely, if a researcher was interested in exploring the brain areas involved in finger movement, they could investigate the bold activity in different regions of interest in the brain at the time of a finger movement task. To do so would require the analysis of structural data as well, so they would have to have a precise measurement of these regions themselves. The processing of these images together involves many interconnected stages. One such workflow from CPAC processing is shown here. The structural images are first aligned with anatomical templates that are used to compare images across individuals. Then, Structural and functional images are aligned together to accurately map brain activity onto anatomical structures. Finally, functional connectivity matrices are generated by correlating bold activity in different regions of the brain. In this case, a functional connectivity matrix would typically be a Pearson correlation of the time series of a pair of voxels or regions of interest defined prior to the study. Functional connectivity then tells us which regions of the brain have the same patterns of activity, opposite patterns of activity, or little to no relationship. Functional connectivity matrices are always square and symmetric, corresponding to the number of regions of interest being used in a given anatomical atlas. For instance, using a 100 region atlas, the functional connectivity matrix would have a shape of 100 by 100 where each value corresponds to the connectivity among that individual pair. For this challenge, you will be provided with 200 by 200 connectivity matrices.